started. So today we are going to talk some applic applications of stoichiometry, whatever we have learned uh, in the meantime. And we have some topic today like aqua solutions, molarity and dilution, precipitation and solubility and the types of reactions. So first we are going to talk about the um, solutions. That's just uh, last week, yeah. From here. Yes. So we are going to talk our first topic, solutions and concentration. We already learned how to count the mole and how to convert the mole to gram, mass, everything. So now today we are going to see, because in the laboratory, we, all, we always need lots of solvent, lots of solution. So how we can make it? So we have to make different concentration of solution that we actually use in the terms of molarity. Uh, so today we are going to learn that. Before that, let's little bit of learn about the solutions. I think um, in the first lecture, I little bit of talk in the beginning that uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous. So if some, some solute dissolves in the solvent, that's a homogeneous and kind of solution. When it is not mixing, that's a kind of heterogeneous. Like, uh, sugar or salt in water is homogeneous and the example of solution. But if we consider the sea water, sea water like um, nowadays in summer, we all, everybody will go or we visit to the beach. We know that sea water is a magic. Why? Because sea water contains the salt and also lots of sand, pebbles, lots of things. Correct? So that's not the solution. So aqua solutions, when a solute is dissolved in a solvent, the resulting mixture is called a solution. So the condition that you have to be dissolve the um, solute. Solute or uh, aqua solution, solvent, as I said, that solution means this is aqueous or liquid. It most of the, but uh, there is an exception, like, you know, uh, who have the asthma problem, especially in we take some spray, Spray is also kind of a solution, but it is not liquid. This is called the aerosol. Even we use in our house for the smell and different purpose, the spray thing. That's a different uh, um, category, but also the mixing. But here we use the liquid sol the solution, and over there we use the gas to mix, to pressurize, and uh, give different types of drugs, even the chemical batteries for our room freshener. So all the uh, aerosols that aerosol means when you press and pressure, give uh, both pressure and then spray chemical, that also kinds of mixture. But this is different, uh, sol um, the solvent is different. So normally when we talk about the solution, we know the solvent is liquid, but it doesn't mean that there is no exception. That's why I just I mean to give you the example of aerosol. So anyway, um, Aqua solutions, when we talk about, we have a solvent and mostly liquid water, mostly, and the solute substance that being to be, that all need to be dissolved. Aqua solution, solute, solute two kinds, normally, ionic and covalent. Now we all know about the ionic and covalent. Ionic compound is made by transferring the electron, and here metal and non-metal involved, like table salt or sodium chloride, and the covalent compound, like for example, sugar, glucose, that's sharing of electron between atoms, non-metal and non-metals. So that means solute can also be two types, ionic and covalent. So when they dissolve, dissolve in the water, actually how they dissolve, this is the question, that how they actually dissolve. And after dissolving within the solute, how it looks. So let's see here. When ionic salts, Okay. When ionic salts are dissolved in water, they dissociate into their ion, cation or ion. So in water, so when the salt actually we dissolve, so it dissociate, give the uh, positive ion and the negative ion as a sodium ion and chloride ion. Let's think about what an aqua solution of sodium chloride looks like. They actually look like that. 
So this is how sodium chloride, sodium chloride in the water, they actually look like that. Now, the placement of ion in a solution is not random. Opposite ion attracts and the electrostatic attractions are the basis for all bonding. So that's the thing. Even with the water, they also make some type, kinds of electrostatic um, attraction and mainly the dissolving as we know the ionic and covalent so they do either by covalent or ionic now let's see some example of polyatomic ion we saw the single cation so in case of polyatomic ion how it is also the similar like copper sulfate and silver nitrate they are the salt and when they uh, ionize into water they also do the uh, same silver ion sulfate ion similarly uh, they but they stay like that if we see see they they as we know that they don't do the random they stay like that here so this is how they stay when they dissolve so although we think that polyatomic ions are always being one single unit but no it is not important because sometimes we have the multiple valency so most of the times they do like that but they also can keep like that intact like that so yeah this is just the summary of flow chart this is also the example just to know that this is how the benzene this is benzene or sugar yeah see this is well so this is how uh, the um, covalent or polyatomic they also be still like that so this is that solved that what is a solution and how they are an example so now molarity molarity actually the concentration expression unit that we randomly use for the chemistry or science laboratory even as a chemist or science student we always need to know how we express our concentration so the one major that term is molarity capital m so in your class you don't need to learn molarity there is a two terms that comes very often molarity and molality l i l molar l i molality so we are not talking about in your class not molality we have only molarity so please uh, do not be confused so this is the molarity the concentration unit what is the molarity molarity is expressed by moles moles of solute per volume of solid volume of solutions one liter okay so normally in a liter so if we say the sodium chloride one molar so what does it mean if we say the sodium chloride one molar solution that means we will write moles of solute for one molar we have to even calculate you know we know how to convert the mole to gram correct the period is so that we are going to eventually write and this is per liter okay uh, per liter water like that so if one liter water and um, one molar means that you know the gram i think it will be 58 or something gram so when we will add uh, those amount of sodium chloride in one liter solution we can say this is one molar sodium chloride we are going to see we have example so molarity means moles of solute solute means any kinds of um, ionic or covalent uh, compound or salts mainly the salts we are talking about and solid that are dissolved in a uh, solution per liter here are some example we have to make sure it more easy so three molar acl means three mole of acl per one liter solution when we talk about the one molar that means one mole when we talk about the three mole uh, okay so now here you can see here the three molar solution means three moles of acl uh, per one liter now if we say the 
three molar of ACL, six mole of ACL divided by two liter, then it will be also the same concentration. So this is the two way we can write. Again, three molar of ACL means even if we um, if we don't need too much amount, so we can just half the amount and half the um, amount of solution. Got it? So if three molar ACL means three. <coughs> 3 mole of ACL per liter. So now you can adjust. Now you can adjust that how much you need, correct? So this is how you can adjust the amount and volume. But your standard is same. The mole of solute per volume uh, of solution. So actually this is like the any for, for any liquid or for any salt, we will talk about that. That one mole, one mole, let's see the X divided by one liter solution so when we will have the standard we can count for any amount and any volume of solution that we need now we can sometimes use the molarity as a conversion factor this is now the similar thing is going that we already done so let's see some example here what is the molarity of a 2.2 liter solution that is made from 82 gram of sodium chloride in water so they are asking you to find out the capital m but they are not asking you for the one liter solution but it they are asking you for the 2.2 liter solution and they this they give this is so our solution is very simple. What we have to do, same, you remember the conversion factor? We have to find out the gram for the one mole. Similar, so we can find out for any amount of. So when, first we need to find out the mole. See, the first mole of the solute. See, the mole of the solute. And then we can find out the uh, capital M. So in that case, we have to find out the uh, molar, uh, I mean, mass or weight, whatever you say in a gram. And this amount we will find out from the periodic table, okay? And remember, I always repeat when I lecture that when we will use the periodic table for the molar mass, remember, we are not going to use the atomic number. We will be using atomic mass, okay? Atomic mass means proton plus neutron number. So I repeat because some, uh, so that you guys will never forget and never mistake this one. So first then we have to find out the mole because if we need to cal count the, calculate the molarity capital M, that means we need the mole amount. So that's why when we will be asking this type of question, look into that what we are asking and what we have. So if we, if we have the gram, so that means we can convert into mole and then mole divided by liter because we are asking not for the one liter, we are asking the molarity for 2.2 liter. So then 1.4 mole we got here um, and divided by 2.2 liter. So that means for this amount of uh, this gram, 82 gram of sodium chloride, when we dissolve in a 2.2 liter of liquid water, our solution um, concentration will be 0.64 molar. So you guys will have this type of conversion from this topic. And it can be even vice versa. See, moles too, we've, here we find that we had the gram, we find the uh, moles. But we may have the opposite, that moles to gram. So we have to just upside down. So conversion factor will be that time gram to mole. Yeah, see here, here we have the opposite one. How many grams of magnesium bromide must be added to 350 ml of water to make a two molar solution? So that means we have the capital M. This is our capital M. And they didn't ask, uh, we even have the solution, I mean, uh, the liquid, but see the water, that means we have the liquid, but we have in a milliliter, correct? But we know the um, capital M equal to mole divided by capital L, I mean, in a liter. 
So what you have to do, you have to convert the ML to first liter. So it will be, I think, 0.3 if you look into. Yeah, 0.35 liter. So when you will have um, uh, capital M and then you will have the liter. So that means you have to find the moles and then you can easily find the gram. So in that case, 0 0.35 liter times 2 mole so divided by 1 liter. Why this is 2 mole? The reason is here. Reason is here. Because we know that 1 mole divided by 1 liter. But here 2 molar, correct? So that's why we have to put like that. And then we will find the volume of uh, solid uh, i mean volume of solvent or water that we need for this amount because this is our standard amount but they are asking for they want to make a magnesium bromide solution and um, the concentration two molar two molar mean the highly concentrated so too much uh, salt will be there so that's why first we need to make the moles of magnesium bromide for this amount and finally we can convert gram to uh, mole and we know that if we calculate the gram of magnesium bromide we will be have for one mole 184.11 gram so now a mole mole will be nullified and if we count we will find our amount we need to dissolve or make this solution this calculations is everyday work when you work, when you will go for the practical i mean the lab i think you will have to take some lab class correct even not only that when you will be graduate student postgraduate student researcher whatever you do when you do something practical this is our everyday job when you go to the lab and make something you have to make something for doing the experiment so this is very alphabet for chemistry that you need to know this type of counting always in the head that how we count the mole gram how we can convert it so yeah this is very useful to make a 0.5 molar solution one could take 0.5 moles of solute and add so it is a common sense can you say that which one will be answered Yes, see, because this is the solvent. Our rule says molarity equal to more, mole per one liter solution. Sorry, I mean uh, water solvent. Uh, then it will be total solution because I want to I want to give the difference between solvent and solution. Solvent is liquid or water. The only down part. Got it? But when we are talking that something is mixing that means solute once we mix solute plus solvent this is no longer solvent solute plus solvent equal to solution got it so this is a very fine line a student can do the mistake correct because if we look into solute plus solvent <laughs> but the answer is c because once we are mixing the solute plus solvent, it's no longer solvent, got it? So it will be then solution, keep it, your uh, uh, brain open. Yeah. But um, yeah, so just, yeah. So that's why the volume of solution, the total main, but though this is actually the solvent, but once we add it, since we are adding it, the solid, so that's why maybe they are talking, yeah, we are talking for the solution. So remember, the solute plus solvent equal to solution. So 500 gram of potassium phosphate is dissolving 1.5 liter of solution. What is the molarity? So same, they are asking you for the M. So first, solute and the whatever the 1.5 we have 
So first we have to find here in a solute mole actually, correct? So we have to find the mole for this amount. And first, uh, how we can find it? We have to find the molar mass of this potassium phosphate. So let's see here, look into here. So 500 gram, uh, two, one, two gram per mole. So we find the mole, mole amount for this is 2.36 mole. So 2.36 mole for the 1.5 liter. So then the concentration for this solution will be 1.57 molar. Okay, please practice this. This type of math, I, I think you will also get in a final exam from this topic. Consider a solution that is 0 0.25 molar calcium chloride. Here, one thing I want to revise, we all know, but let's revise here one thing that we may have chance if we don't focus we may have a chance to mistake and just use their common sense this is a uh, one calcium chloride when dissolved uh, in a solute i mean in a solvent like sol liquid water so what happened or in a solution what happened so calcium ion plus chloride ion but look into here that here one calcium and two chlorine atom correct so when it will dissolve one calcium ion and two chloride ion so even if, if we balance this reaction like that correct so now if we consider the concentration what is the concentration of the ions in this solution so you should say that, oh this is the same but let's see if when we compare uh, how it is come the ratio of calcium chloride to calcium the ratio of calcium chloride to calcium is one ratio one. So this is the concentration 0 0.25 molar. One divided by one. You remember this is the stoichiometry ratio that we need to use uh, when we uh, compare uh, to the reactant to product. Huh? We already use it, but here we are using ionic that this is our reactant if we consider, and this is the dissolved that in a solid, during the solution, they are dissolved, uh, they break down, they dis and make it ion. So the, when we consider the calcium chloride and calcium, since this is one ratio one, the concentration is same, because this is one divided by one. But when we are considering chloride ion to this one, let's change the color. When we considering the ratio between here to here, so what is the ratio? Ratio between two divided by one. So that means 0 0.25 mole, uh, uh, sorry here, 0 0.25 mole divided by two. So that time it will be double. And the basic reason you can also get it down because when it dissolving there, when it break down, ionize, a calcium chloride giving one atom one atom of calcium, but each calcium chloride, they are giving two chloride atoms. That's why the concentration is doubled. So you need to be a little bit of focus here if we find this type of question. What is the concentration of nitrate ions in a 0 0.125 molar magnesium nitrate solution? So that means what is the concentration of nitrate ion? Yeah, see, this is they ask you for that thing. So you have to first write the magnesium nitrate, and you have to write the equation and balance, like magnesium plus two, it will be one, it will be one, and here the um, two nitrate, I think, like that. Yeah. So you will find now the solution. So in that case, it will also be double, correct? So the, let's see the answer then, one, two, five. Yeah, see, 0 0.25, 0. So this is how you will have a question. So when if, when the concentration asking for the ion, um, you need to uh, do the, uh, the, uh, the ionite and how it uh, dissolve it and separate it as an ion and then you need to make a balance the reaction and then you can find the ratio and the answer. This is important, please keep it in the mind and practice here. 
Now, dilution. There we have one Zeus equation m1 v1 equal to m2 v2. That means the concentration and volume. So the concentration of an aqua solution can be lowered by adding water to solution. You can use the dilution formula. Yeah, we, that means we can make, we can uh, lower the concentration and higher the concentration. Sometimes what we do, it's very common, especially the, um, we make the stock solution because, you know, the water is very sensitive to microbial attack and uh, different types of um, hydrogen. So that's why what we do in the uh, science or uh, chemistry laboratory, we make a concentrated solution as a stock solution. So like we make the two molar, five molar, highly concentrated solution, 100 ml. And then when we need to everyday use, we just take a concentrated and we dilute. So like if we have a 5 molar solution, I, I need the 0.5. So we can just dilute it using this equation how much we volume. So that's why we use this formula. This is called the dilution formula. M1 V1 equal to M2 V2. And here also we know the uh, M equal to moles divided by liter. During a solution does not alter the number of moles of solute present in the solution. So let's see the example. It will make more clear conception. What volume of 1.6 molar sulfuric acid, what volume of one molar sulfuric acid is required to prepare 1.5 liter of 0 0.1 molar of sulfuric acid? So you have this stock and you need to make this amount. Okay, so you have this stock and you need to make this amount. As I just said, that from the stock to dilute. So that means we have to use M1V1 equal to M2V2. So M2V2, that the final one we have to make. So V2 1.5 and M1, M2 1, 0.10. And we have, uh, we need to find the volume V1 and we have the concentration M116. So uh, just um, you, sometimes people use directly V1, or sometimes people also use the X as a, what we need to find out. Both are fine. Whatever you like, we need the answer. So then you can find out directly the uh, answer. Got it done? So how you need to use it. So um, here, I want to just repeat that what is molarity and how we can calculate the molarity or concentration of the solution and uh, even how we can determine the concentration of particular solute in the solution and also the dilution. Three things we have learned. And this topic is really important even uh, for the quiz uh, for exam, you remember that this topic, you will have a question. The reason this is very useful as a chemist or science student. Now we will move the precipitation and solubility. What is the precipitation? All the solute not soluble in the specific solvent. So that time we may get the a salt cannot be dissolved, so we may get the down of the solution. That's all the precipitation. So we will be learn here. Yeah, we will be learn here different types of chemical reaction. Uh, the, the three types of chemical reaction. I want to tell you something. Uh, it depends on which books or presentation uh, we are doing. Like college to college, book vary and little, little bit of topic up down. Like um, in some colleges, like I also teach in other, so we do not tell like precipitation combustion. We say the um, single uh, different one, but do not be confused because uh, 
when even if you want to go practice some other book, you may see a little difference, but things are the same. So try to be keep on your presentation and these things, I want to tell you that sometimes I say students that if you have a problem, go back to the recorded lecture video. I don't tell you for the YouTube video. I tell you the lecture that we are recording. Remember that it is very important that uh, follow the syllabus. I'm not sure for other educators, but in my case, since I teach multiple institutes as a part-timer, so we always focus on every college's um, uh, syllabus because that makes a direct connection with student. If student don't have problem and teacher also don't have problem because more or less same thing, we teach different area, the subject, but the syllabus is different. So make sure that you follow your presentation, what your teacher lecture, because when teacher make a question on basis of the same presentation, and when the college makes a question like final exam, it doesn't matter, it comes from the arcs or some other, they also look into the syllabus topic. The topic is same or not. So it is very important that when you do review or something, please follow the syllabus. Then you will not have a trouble. But when you will out of track, we are not sure. And even as I said, that final question, we, we are not going to make it. So make sure that you focus on the syllabus and practice as much as problem you can. So we have three main types of reactions here, precipitation reaction, combustion reaction, and synthesis. So combustion is a kind of decomposition reaction that sometimes you will find in the internet or somewhere. Synthesis is the combination reaction. Precipitation, you will see the different type of single uh, substitution or double substitution. So anyway, we are going to talk here about that. Precipitation reaction. A reaction that produces a solid precipitate uh, from ionic solution, it calls a precipitation reaction. So when two salt react, see, two salt react, this is also called the double substitution anyway. So then this type of, uh, this is I think lead. Yes, lead, lead is yellow. So lead iodide, the solid um, precipitate. So when kind of reaction that you will have a, um, a solid precipitate, it's called the precipitation reaction. So actually what happened here, uh, lead nitrate aqua solution and potassium iodide aqua solution. When we mix these two solution, you know, this is the positive ion, this is the negative. This is the positive, this is the negative. So the replacement reaction, according on the basis of the affinity. So lead replace the potassium and make a new compound with lead iodide. Similarly, lead uh, since leaving the nitrate, so nitrate react with the potassium and make a new salt potassium nitrate. So in this type of reaction, you will see the precipitate and this is called the uh, precipitation reaction and this is the example. Another we have here. You, you, you might see that what I say, the same thing is here in a um, diagram. So here the lead nitrate and here the potassium iodide. See here, the, um, the purple one was the lead. And here the violet lead and the iodine was the yellow. So it again make the new one. This is just a uh, visual demonstration what we see. So aqua solutions are compromised of soluble ions dispersed in um, water. Lead iodide is insoluble, so it forms the solid precipitate. As just I said, that if any salt or anything not soluble in water, when they make a new product, obviously they are not going to miscible with the water. That's why they come down on the bottom of the reaction vessel. And potassium nitrate is the soluble, so you will not find the potassium. This is how sometimes we extract the product in the chemistry laboratory. Not every ionic solid is soluble. That's, yeah, that's true. Insoluble salts will 
precipitate out of the aqueous solution and insoluble salts do not dissolve obviously if you are, if the salt is not soluble then it will it will not dissolve in water how do you recognize that which compound will remain dissolvable which, which will the precipitate let's see the things rules is here please little bit of study here nitrate and acetate salts are soluble alkali metal group a salts and ammonium are soluble so let's see the periodic table periodic table give a lot of information correct <laughs> but lots of exception too oh they didn't give you the list of not this one this one is not good. Do we have here? Yeah, this one. Here, alkali metal, see? Yeah. This one is. So let's go back to the lecture. Oh, sorry, I'm going to the wrong one. Yeah, this one. Alkali metal salts and ammonium are soluble. So look into here. So these are, okay? So these are, and also ammonium is exception, not here, but ammonium is soluble. Next, now fluoride, sulfide, carbonate, chromate, phosphate salts are insoluble. Again, exception, see? again those containing group 1a cation so you can go back and look into the periodic table i think here you go yeah fluoride sulfide diesel fluoride bromide iodide salts are soluble see except when combined with diesel so normally they, they are salt like sodium chloride potassium chloride sodium bromide they are soluble but if this is silver chloride not soluble silver chloride always precipitate as a white so like lead iodide precipitate so this chart is very important for this topic okay please um, try to be um, study here sulfate salts are soluble except when combined with this so that means sodium sulfate soluble but silver sulfate not soluble Mercurous sulfate not, lead not, calcium not, strontium not, barium not. So you need to be study that this is how we can uh, figure it out that which are solute, uh, sol which are soluble, which are not. Hydroxyl ion OH salt are insoluble except for those containing group 1A cation and ammonium are soluble. Those containing calcium, stone barium, which are slightly soluble. That's why, you know, uh, most of the chemistry courses offer with the lab class. Uh, because when you do your chemistry uh, lecture with lab class, lots of things get very clear when you see vision. Like this, uh, this uh, topic, if you already did some mixing reaction like we saw the precipitation you will do in the, in, in the future so if you do it looks more easier because so when we see it makes more sense than the pure thread so i'm not sure but uh, maybe in the future you will have a lab class and you will do those type of experiment you will see some are soluble some are not soluble and that will be make sense more but here uh, temporarily now you have to study okay and you have to learn because you will have a question from here. Solubility rule will be given on the exam. <laughs> this is very true. Okay. So there is a some chart which are soluble, which are not. I have actually, let's say, I'm not sure I find it or not. Which chapter I teach in other. Mm, okay. If I find something, I will add the chart that is easy to remember. I think I have, yeah. But which chapter now I forget. So if I find, I will make a screenshot and I will give you in the blackboard. That will helpful uh, to, I mean, 
rather than the memorization only. Let's consider what this means by looking at the rule one and rule two. Ferrous nitrate is soluble, ammonium uh, sulfate is soluble, potassium fluoride is soluble. Remember that all ionic compounds are salt. Ionic compounds means one will start with the metal. But yeah, here this is the polyatomic ion cation. So potassium is metal. So remember these are the ionic compounds that are salt and um, we are looking for rule one and the rule two. So let's see, this is the polyatomic, this is the metal. How many of the following compounds are soluble in the water? Lead, barium, potassium, ammonium, lithium, and copper. So now you remember that you have to be study here Otherwise, you can't answer here. So see here. This chart is very important. And I'm going to tell you this few days. This is the last topic. Just take a picture from your uh, see on the phone. And sometimes a daily watch to see things. So it will be easily memorized. Okay? Yeah. Because this is not the task. As I say, that um, when I do the... Other college, I take the one course, so I do the lecture lab both. So um, uh, that way I design that today I will lecture one topic and uh, the next day they are going to do that. Like today, if you do lecture, tomorrow you are going to do the same class lab. So when you do the lecture and lab, it visually comes on your head and you will never forget these type of things. But uh, it's okay. It doesn't have any big problem. So you know that most of the metal salts are actually uh, soluble, but um, there are some exceptions. And mainly, I, I want to tell you the lead, silver, this type of question comes. Uh, like silver, chloride, always white precipitate. Lead, always yellow. There are some, and there are very exam material, as I say. So please, you need to be just remember, uh, know and answer. The reaction we saw in the video C. Do we have any video here? I, I, I don't have any video I didn't get, but if you have, you can look into. the. But I can show you lead nitrate and potassium iodide. Let's show you. Most of the, uh, because when the pandemic comes, you know, we could not go to the lab. So we used to, to show the video. So I think I I can find something. Lead nitrate and potassium iodide. Because these are colorful. So some teacher lead nitrate. Some teacher um, did the yeah. Yes. Let's show this one. Can you take my Sorry about that. Fall in love with a highly awarded L certified by Lexus, a collection of premium vehicles exclusively at the Lexus dealer. Colorful, huh? So drop oil we will eat and they will instantly react and they will give you the precipitation. This is not that we are adding some powder, you all know. <laughs> yeah, so that's the kind of things. So this is the reaction and this is on yes. So when we consider the dissociation of all aqueous ions, so we will find which one is solid and which one is dissolved. 
so yeah insoluble salts are designated as solid in a chemical reaction using the subscript s so remember that when if you see the reaction like that aq means aqueous and s means solid okay molecular versus ionic um, reactions when we consider the dissociation of all the aqueous ion, we represent the reaction as a complete ionic equation like that, correct? So often in chemistry, we are interested in only those atoms and that are actively involved in the formation of the product. Obviously, um, we always focus on that. Those whose structure has changed over the course of reaction. In that case, lead plus iodide lead iodide if we eliminate all those ions that have not changed over the course of reaction we represent the reaction as a net ionic equation so we sometimes do like that and uh, we write like that so just for no here the general formula i think i just show you this is called the double displacement or react replacement reaction that we have C A B plus C D equal to uh, A D plus B C or you can also write the B C plus A D whatever you want. So this is the um, way and this is the way I think in the beginning I told you and this is how it works. Always remember the two things remember when the salt mainly metal salt they start with formula start with the positive ion in case of ionic compound. So if you see any kind of, even you don't know, you should know that this one is the positive, this one is the negative. This one is the positive, this one is the negative. So even if you don't know the action, you don't need to know. If you know the formula, you can write the correct equation. So let's see, you don't know this formula, but you, you don't know how to react it, but you can write because you know the formula, correct? This is A this is b this is c this is d so if you know see this type of formula you know that this is the double displacement reaction so uh, the positive ion will go to the negative ion here and this positive ion will come to the here got it so this is your formula of double displacement or this type of reaction double displacement reaction you have some example here Look into okay. Identify the product of the following reaction. So here I want to tell you guys, same, follow this. You don't need to know all, all the name or everything. Minus. So now let me know how it will go. So this barium will go here. Okay. This barium will replace the potassium. And this nitrate will come here. So your product will be barium chromate and potassium nitrate. Let's see which one is the correct. Yeah, barium chromate and potassium nitrate. But remember, you may see the um, similar type of uh, reaction, you see, but the problem, you have to find out the which one is solid and which one is liquid, and also the balancing. Look into here both are the same but what are the difference for uh, four answer action bromium chromate they write this is aqueous aqueous means which is dissolved okay but actually barium chromate is not dissolved potassium nitrate is dissolved so this is the aqueous which was uh, which one is not dissolved precipitate that will be denoted as a s solid so even if we don't know about the sol uh, solution rule we will have a trouble so that's why they give it so please find. And you know, barium is the exception one. Look back, it will not tough to remember because if we look back into here, the rules, here see, barium, lead, mercury, they are the uh, exception. So if you study here, you will easily find uh, the answer here, that which one is uh, soluble, which one is insoluble. Okay. Combustion reaction. Here, most of the vehicle nowadays we use, we use the gas 
and actually we use this type of hydrocarbon as a uh, combustion reagent or combustion our uh, how to say vehicle uh, gas so what they happen actually this type of hydrocarbon react with oxygen combust and make a carbon dioxide and water and the energy we use it so anyway we are talking about here combustion reaction if we look into here reactant and oxide product so c8 h18 when react with the oxygen they will make a carbon dioxide and water this is not the same rule as we said here so now this chapter is closed and now focus on the combustion reaction. Combustion reaction means burning with burning. So anything, any kind of, um, you know, the flammable things, when they come into oxygen, they start to react and burning. So in that case, uh, mainly the hydrocarbon and uh, which can be react to the combustion reaction. Here we have some example. Iron, CH8H1, NGO. N, X, Y, X means the suffix. I mean, there can be different types of uh, compounds. C, X, H, Y. Like here, X equal to 8 and Y equal to 18. Like that. So this kind of format of reactant, who can react with the oxygen and form the carbon dioxide and water? Oxide product, actually. Here, the um, iron is the one uh, example that we always find in the, on, in the fruits, like potato banana apple so if we that's why if we peel what we do when we cut any potato uh, it's a better that if we don't want that black color you need to peel and immediately it's put into the water because that cleans the reaction um, otherwise if it comes into contact of air it will be make it like this type of reaction see same reaction and oxide so combustion reaction is kind of burning and they react with the oxygen and they make the oxide product. So I will not say that too much example, but what we have in the presentation slide, little bit of uh, practice so that you can uh, answer the question. And you can uh, do that little bit of balancing practice, okay? That will be helpful. So we saw first the displacement reaction, second we saw combustion reaction, and finally we have Synthesis or combination reaction. Combination reaction, the general formula is A plus B equal to AB. That means you don't need to be know what they are, but when you see the two product, two reactant coming into one product, mostly 99% case, sometimes you have some minor, um, minor product, but this is exception. So mainly the synthesis product is kind of the combination reaction or product. Uh, product so two or more reactants will be combined and will make a new single product so in that case a plus b will turn into product a b for example carbon monoxide plus oxygen carbon dioxide magnesium plus oxygen magnesium oxide mercury plus iodide mercury iodide this kind of reaction now we have the finally decomposition reaction. Decomposition means breakdown. Like yesterday, you saw lots of fireworks. Huh? Did, did anybody go to the street and see fireworks? That's too much to do. Huh? I need a lot to go. Yeah. I want to go. Like my boy nowadays is going up. So he asked me, every year it comes one time and nobody takes me on meeting. Because of everything now down on the YouTube TV. So, but yeah, I also don't take me. I, I, I thought that there are too many people come, even outside the city. Yeah, so that's the uh, kind of uh, example of a decomposition reaction. So, when you break down something uh, and uh, it makes like a, a big decomposition reaction is kind of opposite of the combination. In case of combination, the reactants like A plus B will make the AB. And here, AB will be break down as a reactant and A plus B. So this is kind of opposite. And here, you will see the oxide will be break down into mercury and oxygen, ozone, oxygen, uh, ferric chloride, ferrous chloride plus fluorine. So this is a kind of 
example. So then, as I say in the beginning, actually the four types of reaction, I think now you saw the four types of reaction, decomposition, synthesis, combustion, and the double displacement. So actually, uh, I wanna go back. Yes, I will take your question, don't worry. Uh, I just had a quick question about the double displacement. Yeah, I will. Just let me show something and then I will take your question. I want to show you something. Where we saw the types of reaction. Yeah, see here? Actually, this is not the three types. This is the four types reaction, okay? So the precipitation reaction, combustion reaction, uh, and synthesis, we will have it. Actually, they, they give this both into the synthesis but actually the combination and decomposition okay there are two categories yes now i can take your question okay, so double displacement yeah double yeah displacement. so uh, which slide let me know um when the no they said that two aqueous solutions cannot okay um, okay uh, look into the slide look into the slide and let me know which slide Yes, uh, this one? The following. So the no at the bottom is that two aqueous solutions are soluble, so there's no reaction. So I just wanted to make sure mm -hmm. um, the equation on top where K, um, Ki plus NaCl. Yeah, it's supposed to be, you were right, it's supposed to be uh, react with like that, correct? But the affinity, this is the exception that um, if their affinity if uh, is equal to same or less then they cannot reaction and this is the exception let's see i find it out solubility list solubility that's why it's not reacting solubility list of, mm, oh, yes. yeah actually that is the kind here we go mm, i will show you yeah, that exception, that doesn't work, but there is an affinity charge. Why is the reason that ex this exception? I think. Hmm, which one is the same? Okay, I have, okay, I will find out one. But here, uh, some we have the list that we also have in our presentation but yes it should be the um, it should be the case which one? here we go that uh, it should be the case that we should be uh, happen reaction but some are not react because of their affinity and solubility list um, they cannot kick each other remember there are two um, metal here correct positive ion so at least one positive ion should have um higher to replace another one so normally it should be react like that but however there are some exception that theoretically it should be react like that but they don't so if you mix two aqua solution both of the products are soluble then there is no reaction just a collection of ion dispersed in a solution got it but this is not only the reason there is the another reason, the affinity, uh, that I want to show you. Uh, I don't remember which chapter I have it. So let's see if I can find it or not. Do I have it? Nomenclature, subchemical, no. Oh, you need six. I remember now. Maybe I can find out. Mm, okay. I will show you because if you see that, it will make it more clear conception that you even don't need to be remember those list. Just a minute. I need to find out. But technically, let's say if you had them in a the beaker, they shouldn't react, right? I mean, so, they, yeah, they will just di di disperse as the ion. Yeah, but this is not only the reason that they don't react. There is the affinity issues that they cannot kick out the another metal. They need to kick out. Uh, that's why I wanted to show you. 
why are they every unit we have so why are the unit six unit three unit four this one testament i will show you i hope here we have it Yeah, I, I will show you one chart, and that will be not only this equation, uh, yeah, this one. Increasing energy. Look into the metal. Now look into here. You have to be the top high to replace the another. If this is very low energy, actually, you cannot replace the higher energy metal. That times... Uh, reaction doesn't happen. So this is the reason, let's see here. Yeah, here we go. I wanna show this one. Silver plus copper chloride, no reaction. Look into silver and copper. Let's look into here. See silver is here, why is copper? Silver is here, copper is here. So copper energy is high than the silver. So silver cannot kick out the copper. So this is also the kind of another reason you will see that theoretically it should be react and make a product, but actually it cannot be the because of the energy level. Okay, this is very important for uh, replacement reaction that which metal uh, can what is going here. Metal is replacing another metal. Correct? Metal is replacing another metal. But metal, if one metal, X metal can be one to replace Y metal, X metal has to be high energized. This is the list of energy of the metal. So, yeah, that's the one reason that if two metal are aqueous solution, the product of that, that will not react and that will be a way that this was on. But this is also the second important reason that why some metals cannot be um, kicked off or displaced another because of the energy. So which you have to be high energy than another metal if you want to be kicked. So high energy metals can displace the low energy metal, but low energy metals cannot displace the high energy. Everywhere muscle weight. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that's the thing. If you think if you think that it it this uh this slide can be helpful. Let me know. I can sketch it and I can upload it into the blackboard. Yeah. So anyway, go back. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting, huh? We are now ready to integrate our knowledge Nomenclature, chemical reaction, stoichiometry, gas and solution. Let's see what we have now. We don't have anything else here. So guys, that's all for your course. We done it, huh? 18 chapters. So today and tomorrow.